WNDS Sports and Tri-State Megabucks present Candlepin Skins. It's bowling with a whole new twist as New England's best bowlers battle for cash prizes in every box. Candlepin Skins is sponsored in part by the Car Phone Store of Nashua. Candlepin Skins is produced in conjunction with the New Hampshire Candlepin Bowling Association. And now your hosts, Doug Brown and Dan Murphy. Hi, everybody, and welcome once again for another edition of Candlepin Skins here on the Winds of New England. So glad you could join us. Doug Brown along with Dan Murphy. And uh, last week, the long winning streaks of Jason Leach and Rich Lottie came to an end. So we are now left uh, with the guys who finished as the top four qualifi qualifiers in the recent roll-up. That's right. Rich uh, went kind of quietly, but Jason didn't. Took <laughs> overtime before he would leave. <laughs> well, let's uh, let you know that we have four bowlers today ready to go from last week. Phil Harris, our overall winner from Dorchester, Massachusetts, and Keith Digio, our second-place winner in overtime from Amesbury, Massachusetts. And they will be joined by Brian Uphold from Londonderry, New Hampshire, and Scott Creighton from Weymouth, Massachusetts. Scott making his first appearance with us here on Candlepin Skin. Four bowlers, of course, competing individually for the Skins prize money, and we'll explain that all to you as the hour goes on. But we're going to get the first of our two games underway right after these messages. Don't go away. Scott Creighton and Brian Uphold will be on the lanes first as we begin Candlepin Skins for another week. Scott Creighton making his first appearance with us. And Brian Uphold just recently started bowling again after taking some time off to recover from a knee injury. Scott for the spare, not quite. Brian? Nope. Scott Creighton opens with nine. And so does Brian Uphold. So, a pair of nines. Start us off. Look at yeah. Overtime winner last week. Big nine drop. Phil Harris kind of found the formula late last week, but <laughs> early enough to take the overall pinfall position. Spare for Keith. They win the skin, let's see. N yes, oh, he does. Wow. <laughs> By the smallest of margins, Keith Digio takes the opening skin of the day, worth $10. Again, the first three boxes in each game are worth $10, as we get another look at Keith Spare. The next three are the miss, I should say, the spare attempt by Phil Harris. The next three boxes, boxes four, five, and six, are worth $15 each. Boxes seven, eight, and nine are worth $25 each, and the 10th box in each of our two games worth $50. The high score in each box wins the skin. If there is a tie for the high score, then the dollar value carries over, and the money adds up. Brian and Scott are going to be open again. Brian with an 8, and Scott waiting and he'll take a nine. Bill Harris missing the head pin. Keith Digio on a spare. A little heavy. Just five on that fill. It's gonna be a scramble here for this skin. Nine, nine. leads right now. <laughs> Well, let's see. Phil, oh, he gave it a run. He'll take a nine. And there's another nine. We have a carryover with nines. How about that? Thought maybe Keith would be able to steal it with the ten, but not able to do it. So this third box now worth $20. Looking ball by Scott. A little full, but he got uh, good mixing action. Leaves a, so just a triangle in the right hand corner, the 4 7 8. Meanwhile, Brian leaves that 1 9 and 10. Yeah. 
Not down seven two, but I'll take my chances with Scotts. Oh, not quite. Ten for Scott Creighton. Ten would have won the skin last box, but who knows? Nine for Brian. Only one mark in the match so far. That was Keith Digio's spare to start. Keith up there now, ready to go. Big first ball, but uh, does not carry the extra pin. Phil Harris does, though. Spare by Phil Harris. Creates the carryover. Look at that. Beautifully played the wood to uh, get both of those pins. Diamond leave for Scott. Still looking for their first marks. Brian waiting for the wood to settle down. They're sure at the one and the seven. And they're still standing, just an eight. And an eight for Scott. So Scott and Brian are tied at 34 through four. Or make it 36 for Scott Creighton. Bill Harris with his spare fill. It's seven. Keith Digio with his spare fill. It's nine. Chance for another carry over here. No for Phil. Chance for Keith to win it outright if he can knock down the two pin. He does for a $35 skin. Bill Harris takes a 10. So we move to the fifth with Keith Digio in the overall lead. Good first ball by Scott Creighton that time, drops nine. Chance for his first mark, just the seven pin to corral right now. As a confidence builder. Ooh, almost. for Brian. <laughs> Keith Digio now with two spares in a row set to fill it. And you can see he's the only one that's won any skin so far. This time it'll take a strike to win it. And there it is. Wow. <laughs> Maybe. Well, that's what's going to happen. Another $15 skin for Keith. box for Phil Harris. That brings us to our first break. Keith Digio catching fire, taking all the money, and now throwing a strike in the fifth. We'll be back on Canopin Skins. <laughs> Brian Uphold. On lane 30, still looking for his first mark. Oh, great ball. Is. Wow. Boy, it makes it look so easy when you throw <laughs> one like that, huh? Well, Scott will fill a spare. Missed the head pin, but got seven. Not an easy spare leave, though. And the one, eight, and nine piece of wood rolling off to the left. It will be probably out of play. 
going to be flush on the head pin, and hopefully the ball and the pin will take. Ooh. Well, that's how close you can come without making it. Got the one and the nine, left the eight. Difficult shot. It gets the ten. Brian upholds tight one three pocket strike. Fifteen dollar skin here in the sixth. Kitigio working on a strike. Looking for the double. Two full. So the strike wins the skin for Brian Uphold. Keith trying to convert to two, four, and six. Seven on the strike. Ten box for Phil Harris. And an eight box for Keith. He is the overall pinfall leader right now at 88 through six. Scott Creighton on the head pin. Does he get the extra pin? No. 5-7, but with the wood. Let's see where the wood settles down. Almost Ooh. a double strike for Brian. I might, yeah, he's got to go all the way to the right. A piece of wood and sweep everything from right to left. See if it works. Yes. Oh, great, great shot. shot. Fine shot. And a spare on strike for Brian Uphold. See how he plays this wood right on the red line. Spinning around as that seven pin finally goes down. No spares for Scott and Brian. Keith Digio. Phil Harris. Good first ball for a strike. Wins the skin. Phil's first skin of the day. It's worth $25. And a spare for Keith Digio. One more look at the Phil Harris strike. A little delay there on the seven and then the six. It's Phil's first skin of the day. The only, one, the only one not on the board is Scott Creighton. And he will be filling a spare right now. As was Brian with that six fill. Scott will take five. <laughs> and about three of the other five are rocking. Yes, yes for the spare. Scott Creighton two in a row. Nine box for Brian Uphold. A little testy 10 pin. Watch, need some help coming across, just nudging the 10 pin for two marks in a row, both spares. Looking for his first skin. This eighth box worth $25. Phil Harris throwing for a double strike, but instead has a half Worcester. Keith working on a spare. This will be his fill. Wow. Oh, oh great wow. spare for Phil Harris. Spare on strike. Converting the half Worcester. And a spare for Keith Digio as well, and that's a carryover in the eighth. It seemed to collapse there. the half Worcester. A spare on strike. This ninth box now worth $50. That's a five fill on Scott's spare. Can you do it again? Not this time. <laughs> Boy, that was a mess. For Brian Uphold. Nine box for Scott. Oh, oh great what? ten. I remember that one. Wow. Brian Uphold to three, seven, and eight for a 10. How about this one? Plays on the inside, too. The ball actually goes into the 9, and the 9 goes into the, uh, the 8, and the 8 goes into the 7. Unusual shot, but nice 10. Keith working on a spare. Pushed it a little bit off to the right, but carries 7. Phil also on a spare. Just 3. So 
Let's see, 10 is good for the skin right now. Ryan's 10 up there. And he may win the skin with it. He does. Well, that's fitting. That was a terrific 10 box by Brian Uphold. And it's good for a $50 skin. Normally, you'd say, well, a 10 box maybe didn't really earn the skin. But that time, he did. Really did. We go to the 10th. Also worth $50. And Brian Uphold getting things straightened out, it seems, now. Four, seven, eight left for Brian. No wood. Scott in the pocket. He'll have three pins, another triangle. But his is a three, four, five. There's one for a spare. Not for Scott, though. Scott, the only one who hasn't won a skin yet. He'll take a nine in the tenth for a 1-11 opening game. Brian will have to stay up there to fill his spare. Brian will fill his spare on the uh, lane 30. He's at 108 plus this ball. Just four, 112 for Brian Uphold. You see Keith Vigio in the lead. Great battle for second right now. Sure is. Bill Harris with a strike in the 10th. And that'll be good enough for the skin unless Keith can match it. He does not. So give the $50 skin in the 10th to Phil Harris. for Keith and a 141. Fine opening game. Here's Phil Harris's strike. Second strike he's had where the six and the seven kind of the last to go. Phil has been off target on his first ball in the fill here late in this first game. Comes out of it with seven and a 122. So for right now, Phil Harris running in second place behind Keith Diggio. Brian Uphold and Scott Creighton just one pin apart and not far behind. We're halfway through on Candlepin Skins. Back to Londonderry after this timeout. Before we get back to the action here in Londonderry, if you would like to jot us a note, either a comment or a question or a criticism, or perhaps you'd uh, like us to interpret one of the rules for you, Dan can handle that for you. Just jot us a line and send it into Candlepin Skins, WNDS TV 50, 50 Television Place, Derry, New Hampshire, 03038. We can't uh, answer all of the mail uh, on the air or in person with a letter, but uh, we'll try and get to the most uh, important of the letters as we can. And uh, we'd love to hear from you, so drop us a line. Now, let's check the Skins winnings from today's first game. Phil Harris leading the way with $75 on the tote board. Brian Uphold and Keith Digio are also online with some winnings and Scott Creighton who will start this second game looking to break into the money column here. This first skin of the second game will be worth ten dollars. Well, a six seven piece of wood in front of the six and just to the right of the seven but it'll be a difficult shot. No almost. Well, try to catch the end of that wood in front of the six which is not a bad idea. Just missed. For the 10 box. A reminder that the action here on Candlepin Skins is brought to you in part by the Carphone Store of Nashua. Our friends at DW Highway South in Lamplighter Square, just across from the Pheasant Lane Mall. The Carphone Store of Nashua, DW Highway South in Nashua. And Brian Uphold, who took a few boxes to get warmed up, it seemed, but is throwing a much better ball now.
chance for the spare, and he's got it. A little clip on the wood, didn't hurt him. Spare up in the first. And here is your pinfall leader after one game. There he is. <laughs> we knew he was here somewhere. Last week, Keith rolled a 133 and then a 127 before winning in overtime, and he started today with a 141 and now a strike to open the second. Almost like a uh, in-shoot. Hmm. now half Worcester he converted one of these earlier not this time give the skin to Keith Dicchio with the strike Give Phil Harris an eight box to start the second game. Scott Creighton on the head pin, not much to show for it. Good effort. Difficult spare with that triangle plus the seven pin in the angle of the wood, you just didn't help him at all. Just looking at the five and seven, make it a nine box. That'll bring up Brian Uphold to work on his spare. It's a nine drop with a nice little helper in front. I like the looks of that. Just stay the red line or to the right. You don't want to go too far left. He didn't even need it. He was right on the pin. No, no need to spare. analyze that to death, I guess. No, it's not. <laughs> spare leads for the skin for Brian. Keith Digio now working on a strike. that close to a double. His style works for him. A little unorthodox. He walks from right on the approach to left, and then the ball goes almost from left to right, almost like on the in-shoot. I'll Wait. tell you, I wouldn't change a thing. <laughs> Not at all. Spare on strike for Keith. Have the four horsemen? Yes. I had a rocking head pin. If that fell on that wood, it might have just rolled all the way back for the strike. Just missing the head pin. So that creates uh, a carryover with the spares. Box number three will be worth $20. And Phil Harris takes the 10 box. Scott Creighton. Running in fourth place right now, but only 11 pins out of second place. Full on the head pin, one, five, and eight pins. Spread eagle plus the nine left. Not something you want to make a living converting for spares. Speaking of making a living, uh, Scott Creighton is from Weymouth, the south shore of Boston. And Scott makes his living as a lobsterman. And I believe he's the first one we've ever had on the program. And I believe he has some for us. Ooh. Uh, no, oh. wishful thinking. We'll have to initiate Scott into the mm. <laughs> system here. <laughs> <laughs> well, see now, a lobsterman, that's something that I can relate to having grown up near the sea. Mm -hmm. Knew a lot of uh, people who fished and worked lobster boats for a living. Tough hours. Tough hours in that job. That's for sure. 
All Spare. kinds of weather. And <laughs> Brian Uphold with his third spare in a row. Keith was a little too high on the head pin that time. Five on his spare. Brian leads for the skin with a spare in the third. That'll be up to Phil to throw the strike to win it outright or spare to carry it over. Eight box for Keith. He's still the fairly comfortable overall pinfall leader. Again, the cumulative two game scores are at the bottom of the screen so you can keep track of where everybody is. Again, Phil Harris missing the head pin. And he leaves himself the one, four, and seven with no wood. Oh, makes oh, it for the spare. Great shot. Played it on the outside. And it worked perfectly. Watch the head pin go down into the four and seven. Very nicely done. That creates a carryover. Box number four worth $35 now. Well, Scott Creighton gets a little break. Still not an easy shot, the one and the seven. Nope. And a nine box. Brian Uphold from Londonderry, New Hampshire with three straight marks. Brian? No, no skins to show for it. <laughs> right. <laughs> Ryan said he had to take uh, about a year off from candle pin bowling. That looks like he's on his way back. Strike after the three spares. Like he's all the way back with that ball. He says, well, I can't do it with spares. Let me try a strike up there and see if I can win a skin. Another skin, I should say. He's won a few already. And he's also gaining ground now on Keith Degiel. There's actually Keith and Brian are starting to separate themselves from the field a little bit. One, two, and ten left for Keith. Piece of wood in front of the ten. Nope. And a ten box. Well, now Phil Harris comes up working on a spare. Strike leads for this skin, which is worth $35. And Phil checking the scoreboard. Just a four, Phil. Phil Harris give the skin to Brian Uphold with the strike. He's up to $100 in skins money now. Scott Creighton looking for his first and Just wow. Can't get that extra pin this time. Ball right in the 1-3 pocket leaves himself the 5 and 10. I almost want to shoot at the 5 and catch the tip of the wood. Oh, oh got, got it. shot. The 5 pin came right down on top of the 10 pin. I just figured maybe the ball would go over there, but he was just too much of the wood, but he got the break coming over the top for the spare. Brian Uphold trying to make it five marks in a row, working on a strike. Look yes. out. Oh, boy, the wood, I think, cost him another strike. It looked like there was a piece headed over for the seven. Oh, Brian just sliding by. Keep Scott alive for his first skin. And he slides by again. Nine box, but an 85 half for Brian Uphold. 
What's the difference? Fills. He had the four marks in a row, but when you get those big fills, nine, eight, strike. Keith waiting for the reset on lane 30. And while he waits, we'll remind you that tomorrow at noon here on the Winds of New England, we will have mixed doubles action for you. It'll be our championship match. Our number two seeded team, Jack Ray and Debbie Scannell, will face our top seeded team, Dennis Shute and Tony Marie Baldinelli. That's tomorrow at noon from Park Place Lanes in Wyndham on Candlepin Stars and Strikes. Keith Deggio right on the head pin, and it's a nine drop. Six pin with three pieces of wood just to the left, <laughs> all pointing at him. Got it. Creates the possible carryover with the two spares. It's going to take a strike by Phil. Let's win it outright. Phil and Scott have got some uh, catching up to do. Phil has really been having trouble with the first ball here today. Phil from Dorchester, Mass. Jason to Boston. Works for Francis Kenny Painting. Takes the 10 box. We reach the halfway point of game two with Brian Uphold on the charge, challenging Keith Deggio for the pinfall lead. Back we are in Scott Creighton working on a spare. You saw we have a carryover situation, a $30 skin here in the sixth. It's a five fill on a spare. Well, unfortunately for Scott, he's had a lot of those five fills. That's the third one he's had on a spare. And a six box. Brings up Brian Uphold, who is putting quite a charge on first place here now. Brian works for Roadway Express. Oh, big strike. As you were saying, don't forget <laughs> now, he missed a single pin in the fifth box. That's right. And that would have been a strike on spare and six marks in a row. But it was open in the, in the fifth. Actually came within a single pin of a triple, triple strike. strike. Right. Keith Deggio uh, about to fill a spare, but we've got to wait until... Cindy Sissom cleans a piece of dead wood out of the channel. Keith still in first place, but boy, Brian is really. Keith will be working on a spare, so. A little full in the pocket takes seven. Three, six, and seven left, and all the wood rolls off the plate, so he's going to do it on his own, trying to split the three and the six. He'll take a nine box, so Brian Uphold strike still leads for the skin as Phil Harris comes up. This is about where Phil caught fire last week. That's right. And he'll have to do the same if he wants to come back again next week. Give it to Brian Uphold. Yep, the $30 skin for the strike. Brian up to $130 now. And Phil takes nine. The seventh box worth $25. Scott right dead in the pocket, and look at that. 
you believe that? Wow, eight and ten. At least he's got a piece of wood. That's small consolation after that ball. Whoa, my. He's trying to go low and clip the eight pin and the wood. Send it into the ten. Nine it is. Boy, that first ball looked like it would be a lot better than that split. Ryan Uphold now on a strike. What a game he's working on. Well, if he comes this way, he's got a double, but you're right, that's an eight. Well, it's not even filled yet. It's eight in the first ball. Five and eight for the spare. No. Nine on the strike. Brian and his wife Rebecca have a three-year-old, Jamie. And Brian takes the 10. 114 through seven. He had 112 in the opening game. He's already past that. He's got three boxes to go. Keith Digio. Not much happening there. Two, four, seven, six, ten. Oops. Well, well, well. That was the same ball again, right through the middle. He'll take seven. Just a one pin advantage now over Brian Uphold. But both of those balls comfortably out in front. Not like last week when we had to go into an extra frame to settle second place. $25 skin here in the seventh, and Brian's 10 leads for it right now. And he may very well win it with a 10. This would be a pretty spectacular 10 if Phil were to convert it. And he almost did. Nine box, nice out, but the skin goes to Brian Uphold. The eighth box worth $25. Scott Creighton again in the pocket. Come on, what's going on down there? Five, eight, and ten. He's going to shoot at the five and eight. Hopefully he can get some help from the wood. He's sliding by the five. There's a situation the bowl is bowling a lot better than his score indicates. Nine box. Especially gotcha. with that first ball. First and second place finishers here today will come back next week, and they'll be joined by Chris Bover and Paul Willits. Boy, relentless. This time, the three and five for Brian. No. I wanted to avoid that front piece of wood. What it did was send the ball in between those two pins. There's the 10. Keith Digio. Just missed the head pin by a fraction on the way by. Will he take the 10? No. Ooh, I was going to say, I'm not going to let Brian win with another 10 box, but <laughs> he still leads up to Phil. Big nine drop. Two shots at it. This one to win the skin outright. No. And this one to have the skin. <laughs> Got that one to create the carryover. The ninth box will be worth $50.
maybe Scott figured I'll try leaving the head yeah, and see how that works. Well, that didn't seem to work either. Seven for Scott. Brian Uphold and Keith Digio dead even at 236 with two boxes to go. And the only thing it appears that remains to be settled is who'll finish first and who'll finish second. It appears they'll both be coming back next week. And we have a little skins money still up for grabs here. Seven box for pair, Brian. Pair of sevens. <laughs> <laughs> the stage is open, I guess you could say. That's for sure. Keith will go first on lane 30. Oh, there's seven already. <laughs> Advantage Keith. <laughs> The one, seven, and eight, not exactly a spare lead, but the wood may help keep some things in play. Well, not enough. But he takes the lead for the skin. <laughs> also takes the lead in the match with a nine box. Two pin advantage over Brian Uphold with one box to go. Well, the pressure on Phil Harris now to beat a nine for $50. <laughs> Ties it. In the same situation he was in last box. Now this time he's got two shots at it to win the skin, though. Oh, yes. Gets it on the first try for the spare and the $50 skin. There will be no late rally uh, for Phil Harris today. The last skin of the day worth $50. Scott Creighton would love to get it. He has yet to get a skin today. He's left himself the one and the three. Ah, no. If it wasn't for bad luck, he'd have no luck at all. In those days, first appearance with us for Scott. Ten box. Two game total 201 for Scott Creighton. Remember though, he may still be alive for this final skin if a carryover is created, but there is a strike for Brian Uphold. His third strike of the game. And he's barely missed a couple of others. And his sixth mark. Brian with a chance at a 150 game. Oh, maybe 160. <laughs> that one goes over. He's got his 150 already. This will make it 151 if he can knock the six pin down. Yes, he does. Does with help. 151 and a 263 for Brian Uphold. Well, Keith Digio will definitely be coming back next week, but. Uh, if he can get a mark with nine on it, he'll be the overall pinfall leader. He can rear back and throw. He's back next week. He just wants a strike. There oh. is a quick one. Oh, my. Wow. We've got a carry over here in the 10th, regardless of what happens now. So all four guys are still alive for this last skin. The strike in the 10th gives Keith 255, which isn't reflected yet on the bottom of the screen. The strike has not been added in, so it's 255 plus the fill. So he needs a nine fill in order to be the pinfall winner for the day. There's eight. And eight and a half. <laughs> Well, last week, Keith had to go to overtime to finish second. Today, he will finish first by one. 123 for a two-game total, 264. 
And because of the strike, he has uh, created a carryover situation for this final skin. So we'll take a break and come back to settle it after Phil Harris finishes his game. He's on a mark. Fills it with eight. And another spare. Just a little too late for Phil. He'll finish third, but he'll be well out of second place. 220 plus a ball. Actually, 228 plus a ball. And make it 238. 116 for Phil Harris. He throws the strike on the spare. We've got a skin to settle when we come back on Stars on Candlepin Skins. Scott Creighton and Brian Uphold will start as we settle the last skin of the day. Scott Creighton's been shut out so far. Ryan Uphold with the big second game. Oh my, two hmm. tough leaves here. And Scott can't convert the one, eight, and 10. Ryan will be happy to get out of here with a nine. That may not be good enough as Scott throws a 10. Ryan has to convert this to stay alive and he does not. So Brian is out of it. Now Keith Digio and Phil Harris with a 10 to shoot at here. $50 skin. Last one of the day. Keith Digio will be back with us next week. And the strike. Can Phil answer? No. The last skin of the day, $50, goes to Keith Digio, and we will be back to wrap it up on Candlepin Skins after this. Welcome back to the Londonderry Bowling Center. Doug Brown with Dan Murphy and uh, Keith Digio is going to be back for his third week in a row. And Brian Uppel, we talked about a pretty interesting story. We haven't seen him here for a while on the wins because he gave up the game for a while, but uh, looks like he hasn't forgotten anything. No, the first game looked like he gave it up for a while, but then all of a sudden he found the groove and he has no stopping him after that. All right, let's check the final scores on this one. It's Keith Digio, our overall winner at 264. Just one pin better than Brian Uphold, Phil Harris, and Scott Creighton out of the uh, money in terms of pinfall. And as far as the cash is concerned, well, Brian Uphold, the big winner there, followed immediately by Keith Digio. Phil Harris also got on the board. Tough day for Scott Creighton, uh, rolling a 201, but it seemed like he bowled much better than that. That's right. It's one of those situations where the score doesn't indicate how well he bowled. He just couldn't carry that extra pin, and that happens. All right, so next week, Brian Uphold will be back. Keith Digio will be back, and they will be joined by Chris Bovair and Paul Willits. Don't forget, tomorrow at noon from Park Place Lanes in Wyndham, we'll have more Candlepin Bowling action for you here on the Winds of New England. It'll be the finals of our annual Mixed Doubles Tournament. We hope you join us for that. Until then, for Dan Murphy and the whole crew, I'm Doug Brown. Have a great weekend, everybody.